welcome to the Extreme Series. I'm your host, Tamara Apted. Today I'll be guiding you along an exclusive behind the scenes look at one of the hottest sports around, Monster Truck Racing. Join myself and Extreme Series correspondent Adrian Hates as we give you a rarely seen look under the hood at this exciting sport and take you where no other show even dares to go. So grab your helmets, put on your fire suits, because the action's about to get hot. Hi, I'm Adrian Heights and welcome to the Extreme Series. We're here this 4th of July weekend in beautiful Del Mar, California. They're having their annual San Diego County Fair. And as you look around, you can see the fair is pretty cool, but that's not why we're here. There's a reason this is called the Extreme Series. We're here for the ground-pounding, very exciting, big, bad monster trucks. So come with me behind the scenes to find out just what and who makes these giant trucks come to life. So let's put a journey to Behind the Monsters. Behind me is Rick Swanson and the Obsession Racing Team, one of the premier racing teams in the world of monster trucks. Now, if you think you have a hard time changing a tire, come check these bad boys out. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you still? Your show's about to start, huh? Yeah, they're moving trucks, but, you know, a typical California person. Got to come in late, make sure you make a scene. Of course. I don't know anything about that. Can you tell me a little bit about this thing? I can't believe how big it is. It's a 66 inch tall tire, it's made by Firestone and these are actually made for monster truck use only. Only monster trucks, not tractors, anything else? No, originally the tires were made for fertilizer trucks, for the agriculture and um, the reason they're so big is so when they went over the plants, they wouldn't crush the plants. Really? Yeah. The plants would pop right back up? Yeah, you could actually, if it was on a fertilizer truck, you could almost get ran over by it and the pounds per square inch, what's going on the ground, wouldn't hurt you. Unbelievable, but I don't think I'm going to chance that. I don't want to be run over by a monster truck wheel. Well, explain all these grooves and stuff to me. What is that all about? What happens when you get these, these are 1,100 pounds. So first thing you do is you start cutting away at unnecessary weight. You do it yourself? Yeah, that's 60 hours of cutting right there. You're an artist as well, a monster truck driver slash artist. Amazing. I don't know about that. It's, the lighter these are, the better your back feels when you land, so it's important to cut them down. Well, yeah, I agree with that. Well, there's a lot going on here today, so let's get this tire on. Ready? So now it's 700 pounds, which means you chopped up 400 pounds of rubber? Yeah, and I did 300 on the backs. Did you weigh it when you chopped it off? Yeah. <laughs> this is just amazing to me. It's crazy. Well, you need to know. The reason you weigh it, just out of curiosity, for instance, they were all four brand new when I got them. The front you cut down more because they float more than regular. Instead of actually pulling you, you, let, you cut them down more because the front end's always light. So cut them down, and as long as they're spinning, you're doing good. The backs, you'll notice, I left a taller knobby on it, and that's so they could get in and bite. So they can grip this ground and yeah. move you. Well, Be monster-like. It depends what you're doing, because, like, for instance, a couple of weeks ago, we were at Irwindale on asphalt. I turned these around backwards, so instead of being the right front, I put it left rear, and I put the left front on right rear, which gave me a flatter surface to run on asphalt. All the technical stuff that goes into this, and all you think is that you just drive these huge trucks. This is amazing. There's so much that goes into it. I can't wait to see all this. Let's put this tire on. <laughs> see how tough I am. as much as I could, but I'm going to let these guys finish it off because they know what they're doing. I can hear that the trucks are starting to get ready for the show, so we'll catch these guys later. Alright, now we've seen the behind the scenes of what it takes to get one of these giants prepared for a show like this. Now it's time to see what they do best, and that's to act like monsters. Let's take a look.
Let's watch this giant. The sound, the smell, the energy, and if you thought that was good, wait until tonight. We're really going to light up this arena. So, Rick, how long have you been doing this, and what made you decide Monster Trucks? Actually, I got into it 10 years ago. Uh, the first two years I was just a tech for the MTRA, Monster Truck Racing Association. And the reason I did that is so when I was building my truck, I wanted to build the truck the first time right, not, you know, repeat after repeat. Didn't want to have a bunch of revs on it. So I did that. Um, took me two years to build the truck. Actually, it took me about a year. And the first year was saving up the money for buying all the big parts. Yeah, I would imagine this is a little expensive. Not if you do it right. <laughs> That's what sponsors are for. Oh, very nice. Well, so it took you two years, and you built this from bottom to top? Yeah, I actually bought the bare frame with no brackets on it, nothing, from Dan Patrick. He built probably 80% of the trucks. So, now, you don't do this alone. Obviously, you've led us under the skin of your ride, and this is a huge, extreme process, and you have a big, huge trailer, and you have tons of people helping you, right? Yeah, my nine-year-old crew chief. Yeah, I met him. He's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I, normally it's me and him on the road when he's out of school. When he's in school, my wife's with us a lot. She does all the paperwork. She keeps the office running when she can. She'll be here tomorrow. She's actually spending the day with her mom, and she'll be here tomorrow. Well, I look forward to meeting her. This is definitely a family affair for you, your wife, your son, and that's it? You don't have any other crew people? Once in a while we do, but usually, no, it's just three of us. I think that's pretty amazing. Cool. Now, I know you're about to go and do another show, and I know you only have a few minutes with us, but I'm very, very curious. What do you do to prepare the truck before a ride right, like you're going to do right now? Depends what kind of show you want. You don't prepare it. You just let everything fall off and break. It's a better show for the fans. Cost us more money. Right. Oh, yeah, that's my other question. What happens when stuff falls off and breaks in between shows? Well, usually you pick the most annoying fan and aim right for them for when the tire comes off, it keeps going. No, I'm only joking. I don't believe him. This guy's too nice for all that kind of stuff. Well, good luck because I'm going to be out there cheering for you. And well, I hope you... So I named that tire. Hey! <laughs> I helped you put this tire on. It better not fall off. Yeah, that's, that's the tire I'm worried about. We'll check in with Rick at the end of the show. There won't be any tires flying off here. I hope not. <laughs> Get inside of it. Open door, climb in. Come on. 
Show me. Because I am getting in this before I leave the fairground. Open the door and climb in. <laughs> no, you climb up from the bottom. You what? You climb up from the bottom. Cool. It's a giant jungle gym. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you very much. Let me get the Happy fairground. landings, as they say. We'll do our best. That's cool. Sure. I'm getting out of the way. Alright guys, round two at the Monster Truck Show here in Del Mar. This one's going to be even more exciting, more monstrous than the last one. And I've been talking to my personal favorite, Rick Swanson, and he said it's going to be awesome.
All right, day two of the Monster Truck Show, and I'm here with one of my favorite racing teams, Team Obsession, Rick Swanson and his son Eric. Now, I have a lot of questions because look at this thing. It's amazing. This is pretty heavy competition, this stuff, right? But you're all you're all friends. We're as all well, friends. Right? I mean, anybody can take whatever I have and vice versa. Everybody wants to make sure everybody runs. Nobody wants to win a truck because they broke and couldn't make it. Because right. that's not winning. That's just unfair. So everybody's really good friends in the pits. And everybody helps each other if, if there's a break. So you wanted to race cars. You had a friend that had a monster truck. You were envious. You, want, you wanted one for yourself. So you decided to build one. And what kind of process was that? I mean, is there a manual? No. Well, that's why I became the MTRA certified inspector, because that gave me a manual of what had to be done, okay. the safety stuff that had to be done in order for it to race, what was going to happen, what I was going to expect. Um, I met, we actually, one of my safety classes, or my inspection class, was back at Dan Patrick's shop in Ohio. Okay. So I flew back there and I got to meet him in person, to check out his shop, see what he was doing. At the time I had a full-size Bronco that we were selling, and when we sold it, it bought the frame, axle centers, and four-link bars and one for this wheel. truck. <laughs> no, I didn't even buy that. It just bought those three parts. You that had was to sell it. five houses to get these wheels. <laughs> And uh, so, you know, everything went really good. Um, we sold the truck, I you know, bought that, and I bought this frame. When you buy them from Patrick Enterprises, you can buy a complete turnkey truck. You can buy any part you want. You can buy just about anything. Okay. So I told Dan, I said, I want a frame with no brackets on it, because I wanted to change some stuff around. Um, I was the first person to put the fuel cell on the back. I was going to ask if you have any kind of your own design put in this. Yeah, I was the first person to put the fuel cell on the back, and at the time everybody said, no, it's impossible, it can't work, you know. Is there a benefit to having that in the back? Or? One of the big trucks in the industry had the fuel cell on the front, and um, the cap actually came loose, the cap for the fuel cell. And what happens, since we only run brakes on our drive lines, they'll shoot sparks quite a bit. And on a big track, when you're hard on the brakes, you'll see them shooting sparks. I saw it yesterday. We took off, the fuel cap came off, and the fuel came out because it was full, and it came down and hit the brake and ignited. Caught, caught in fire. Well, we all wear you know, fire suits and everything else, but what happened is he got burned here from the neck roll, and it was actually the roll bar padding dripping down his helmet and getting oh in. Oh my gosh. I mean, he walked away from it. He got some burns, but it was no big deal. Well, that was the deciding factor that instead of me not knowing anything, every truck out there went to rear cell. Right. Well, I gotta say that, I mean, you watch these trucks and they're absolutely amazing and there's these big tough guys that get out of them and you would think that it's all about macho, and, but I've been here and all I hear is safety, 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 safety. And so you guys are very conscious of yes. the safe, safety aspects and I think that's awesome family aspect. You said your wife was going to drive. You guys kind of started this together. Um, you have your son on board all the time. And what is your job here? Crouchy. Crouchy? Yeah. At nine? Yeah. Don't you understand this? A big title for a nine-year-old? Yeah. And I heard that you drive the truck sometimes. Yeah. Yeah? You say it like it's nothing. I can't reach those <laughs> pedals. How do you do it? How do you do it? With some pillows behind my back. <laughs> And some blocks on the pedals. Blocks on the pedals? How about a few phone books underneath your bum? Does that work? You don't uh, need it? Nah. No. That's one thing that I've noticed about being here. Um, that it's very oh. family oriented. A lot of these trucks have their sons involved and their wives. And it's, it's really nice, actually. You guys get to travel together and you make a lifestyle out of it instead of a hobby. Just call us carnies. Carnies. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, I'm watching you come out in this huge, massive truck. These things are crazy to me. And your body is being jerked all around. You're doing spins and jumps and going over cars. How is it as far as the physical aspect in yourself? It beats you up pretty bad. Um, you know, like we said, he's nine. In four years, and 13, he'll be driving. In fact, one of the trucks that's coming later today for tonight's show and tomorrow's show is the Monster Moose truck. That's actually his body for his truck we're building now. I heard about that. You're getting a truck built, huh? <laughs> well, well, we'll no, talk he's about gonna that. get this one. I get the new one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about you build me one that's about this big? <laughs> Look, this is my truck. I'm driving this home. 
So physically, <laughs> what, can you tell us a little bit more about what how um, you feel when you get out? Are you shaken up? It depends. I mean, we've done some big jumps, and, you know, rollovers and stuff like that. And what the worst part of it, believe it or not, is actually your neck. Because no, I happens, believe it. <laughs> believe it or not, I believe what it. What happens is you're strapped so tight into a seat. Now you're going to put a three-pound helmet on your head. Water. You put a neck roll on. Some some of the newer drivers are actually using the Hans device. When he starts driving, he'll use the Hans device. Okay, now mind. what is that? What it is actually, that? when you strap in, it straps underneath your shoulder belts. Okay. And or your shoulder harnesses, and it goes and connects to your helmet. So it keeps you. Oh, okay. So, so your, it moves your helmet as a has unit. very little movement. Okay. That's great for him because he's going to learn with it. The older guys that learned on neck rolls and we're used to looking around and seeing where we're going. Yeah. If we feel like we're restricted with them. So I will start using them. What's happening is the bar keeps raising every year more and more. I mean, when I started this business, all there was was cars. Three, four years after I started, I can remember when the first minivan came out at Anaheim Stadium. It was uh -huh. a big capacity filled crowd, you know, 45,000 people. We're there for Clear Channel. I mean, it's, you know, the show. We're going to put the show on to make sure everybody's excited. And here come these minivans out of the hole. Yeah. <laughs> what are we supposed to do with these right. things? Well, wow. now it's, they so built big to tabletop. Over. Oh, yeah, you just right off the front of them, whatever, right. however you hit them. Now they built, you know, then, then came the buses, and it was a car, a van, a bus, a van, a car. It was up and over those things, you know, and wow. it's like, man, the bar keeps going higher. Well, this year, well, I was in Houston, Texas, and they had a bread truck. They stuck a van inside the bread truck so it wouldn't crush, you know, give it some support. <laughs> and that was on top of a 12-foot mound. Oh so it was 20-some feet to the top of the bread truck. And I, mean, I can remember walking by in the driver's meeting, and I had a guy who went with me to help me crew because it was... A one-night race. We drove there, did the race, turned around, drove home. And uh, I remember walking by and telling Mike, I'm like, I ain't doing it. Yeah. It's just too tall. Well, lo and behold, freestyle comes around, you know. I made it to the semifinals, and I was feeling kind of cocky about myself. <laughs> and I'm out there spinning donuts, going, they had a school bus over here, and this thing over here, and I'm doing all this. Well, I spin my donut, all of a sudden I look up, and I'm like, there it is. Yeah. And once you're pointed at it, if you turn away, you're going to get booed. So... Basically, I closed my eyes and yes, really? figured out what was going to happen later. <laughs> that was my question. Can you tell me your favorite highlight of your career? First time I won the race was a pretty big career highlight. Um, I think that I won hometown Anaheim for three years in a row. That was a pretty big deal. But I think probably the two biggest career highlights, all the big name trucks, um, I run with Grave Digger quite a bit. I run with Maximum Destruction quite a bit. The first time I beat Dennis Anderson in his truck, it was just a huge ego rush for me. <laughs> I've beaten other Grave Diggers, but I never beat, you know. Dennis is the man that started the truck. He's the wild man. The first time I beat him was great. And then just two weeks ago, I've beat Maximum Destruction a couple times in the with Tom, the real driver right. of the truck, the, what do you want to say, the A team okay. driver. <laughs> I beat him two weeks ago, and that was that was a pretty big rush. I mean, these are guys that I have the utmost respect for. Right. You know, and That's when you great. beat them, it's pretty cool. Cool. Congratulations. Well, you guys got to get going, going to race. You better get ready, too, right? True, dude. You got to take care of your dad. You got to fuel up the truck. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be out there watching, and I can't wait. Thanks, guys.
During the quarterfinals race at Del Mar, Rick showed us just what his Line X Obsession truck is made of. Impressive driving, not to mention an equally impressive machine underneath him, led Rick to a clear victory over the Take a Bite Out of Crime truck, driven by Murphy Wood. But once the race was over, we saw that everything didn't quite go as planned for Rick during that run. I took a hard hit and it just twisted the sway bar. So I just gotta adjust it back into place. Now we know that damage to a truck during a race is definitely not unheard of in this sport, but it was pretty amazing to see how fast Rick could prepare the truck in time for the next run. That's close enough. What happened? Nothing. When I that first hit coming this way, uh -huh. I was judging where I was at compared to the other truck. I knew I had a little bit of time, so I figured you guys are filming on this side. Yeah. I'll give you kind of an angle shot of the top of the truck. <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. So it was all for us. He did That's it all it. for us. But you're fixed, right? You did it? All right, go in. Truck had a little mishap, but it's okay. He's going to still race. That's why we love him. Now let's rewind a bit before we take a look at the rest of the action at Del Mar. The Extreme Series has been following these drivers for some time. We previously had an opportunity to see these monsters perform in Laughlin, Nevada. Besides getting a front row seat to the action on the track, we went behind the scenes to talk with Ronnie Sturgis, the driver of Nasty Boy, as well as Brad Campbell of Monster Moose. Ronnie took the time to share some of his monster truck history with us. Well, I started when I was 14 years old. Uh, my uncle got me into it. I started doing it when I was a kid on the summers and stuff and I got more and more into it and more started driving. I, I crewed for two years. I've been doing it for about 10 years and I started racing when I was about 15 years old competitively with Bigfoot and Digger and all them. Now to the casual observer these trucks may seem very similar but under the hood each one is a unique creation. What's unique about my truck it's a, it's a 40's Willys pickup truck. There's not too many of them out there it's different, it's not like a regular Chevy body. I like old school stuff, it looks good, it fits me, you know. Uh, you know, the suspension, it's nitrogen, air over hydraulic. And then I got 26 inch shocks in the rear, makes a smoother ride in the back, cause it's heavier. I got a 572 Chevrolet. It's an aftermarket block and stuff. This is a truck that the Outdoor Channel created and then brought to me and offered me to run on one of my trucks. Uh, it's a uh, four-link suspension, nitrogen-charged shocks, and then they're set up the way, that, the way that I like them as far as my style of driving. The uniqueness of these trucks doesn't stop under the hood. Each driver has his own technique, even on something as simple as tires. A lot of the people cut their tires. Well, I didn't, I didn't cut my tires. I left them smooth. and It allows you a little leeway from getting them sliced. They're a lot heavier. That kind of helps up because it keeps it low to the ground. Right now, uh, my tires have just been the way that they've been since I got them because I don't feel like putting in the 20 to 40 hours per tire to cut them down. And time is a valuable commodity to these drivers. The business of monster truck racing can be quite demanding in that respect. We probably do probably 40 shows a year. Um, the last couple years we did 52 shows a year. That was pretty much every weekend. A lot of the guys are running 35, 40 events a year, which is quite a few. I think there's 52 weekends in a year. And uh, we're out right now. I've been eight weeks straight without being back home. I think we probably got in close to 20 events just this year already. Now that we've gone behind the scenes with these monsters, let's take a look at them in action.
Monster Truck Racing may seem like it's all about the boys and their toys, but we met a young lady who's crushing that stereotype, as well as a few cars along the way. Brandy shares with us what inspired her to climb into the cockpit of one of these monsters. Well, I got started, um, it was through my boyfriend, Brad Campbell, and uh, I don't know, they're big and tough and seem like fun. <laughs> yeah, it seems like fun. I've played it around in it a little bit, but tonight will be my first night in front of a crowd. Just knowing how to drive a street truck does nothing to prepare you for driving a monster truck. Apart from outward similarities, there's no comparison between a street vehicle and one of these extreme machines. Everything is different. There's uh, the only thing that's the same is they go forward, backwards. You know, um, there's they're a lot funner than a normal pickup. And to make things even more interesting for the driver, there's also no comparison between one monster truck and another. Every truck is different to drive. They're all, I mean, even if they're, you know, same motor, same everything, they're, everything's different. Brandy isn't concerned about safety for her first time out. Interestingly enough, her life is in Brad's hands, literally. Brad has a little button that he, <laughs> that he if I get too dangerous, then he'll <laughs> shut me off. If I'm doing better than he is, then he'll shut me off. Let's take a look at how Brandy did on her first run. As you can see, Brad never had to use a safety switch on Brandy. And the experience of her first run? Well, it literally took her breath away. <laughs> ah! Shit! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah! That was so much fun! I can't! I'm like shaking. Shit, the, going over the cars is the funnest. Like, I was like, getting out, I'm like. You don't get out shaking. Even Sam after 25 years. The worst thing was, was the heat, how hot it is in there. But I have no saliva in my mouth. <laughs> I have no air in my lungs. My neck hurts really bad, but. But will you do it again? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, he's, he better get used to me. <laughs> he better get really used to me. This young lady proved herself to be quite capable behind the wheel of one of these monsters, as well as being the crowd favorite that night. I expect we'll be hearing more of her in the future. Now as to our future, let's get back to the action in Del Mar, where the semi-finals are about to begin.
and drive like do. hell? <laughs> no, this, this is what I like to do. This is my kind of racing. It's horsepower is important, equipment's important, driving skills important. Uh -huh. It's not straight line drags where you know you go as fast as you can straight and it's a horsepower deal. Uh -huh. This is driving, it's finesse. It's how do you want to hit the cars, what do you want to do over the cars, all that kind of stuff. Well, this is what I like to do. You know what I realized that, every, that you did that everybody else did it? When you go over the cars, you don't go for height, you kind of go for, it's more technique. When you come off, you turn immediately. Everyone else is going for height and yeah. showmanship, but you have like a technique, obviously. It works, he's in the finals, and you're going to win. We're going to do our best. <laughs> if not, we'll still let you go. <laughs> Unfortunately, it seemed the finals in Del Mar were not to be in Rick's future. The nature of this event kept him from showing us just who is the king of the monsters. Rick explains what happened. You know, this isn't racing. This is a fair show. It's the fair pays us X amount of dollars to be here. The show can only be X amount of time. And because they want people in the fair, obviously, to if people are sitting here, they're not spending money at the vendors. If people aren't spending money at the vendors, the fair can't come back and sell those booths again. So fair shows, and it's typical, are only X amount of time, and that's it. And so you do your best. What you can do, you do. What you can't do, you can't do. And, you know, honestly and truthfully, it means I ran my truck one less time. So I got one less run on the truck of potential breaking parts. So you got to remember, this isn't racing when you come to fairs. It's race. It's ego racing. Yeah, you want to win. That's fine and dandy. But other than that, you really don't care. You're here for a paycheck. We're here as not as racers, but as entertainers, and that's all we're here for. So I mean, I don't. I don't mind. It's part of the business. To get upset is ignorant because all it did was save me money. So why get upset? Okay, I had to come visit probably the cutest monster truck here. Is there such a thing? It's Take a Bite Out of Crime, Gruff McDog, and the American Made Racing Team, Rod Wood and his son Murphy. Now guys, I got, I think this is the cutest truck. Do you? Yeah, we do. <laughs> We're a little bit fond of it. Yeah, so how did you come about getting this name in Gruff? Well, actually how we came uh, across is uh, there wasn't enough positive role models out there. So we uh, wrote National Crime Prevention Council, told them what we were interested in doing, and they thought it was a great idea, and they let me roll with it. Uh, I think that's great. So you're putting something back into the community as well as having a lot of fun out there, right? Yeah, it's a crowd favorite. You know, it, there's so many uh, negative role models out there that it, it was nice and refreshing to see a new one, and, and I wanted to be part of it. And uh, it's just, you know, it's a part of the family now. Yeah, I think that's great. How long have you been racing? I've been racing uh, about 12 years now. Wow. Okay. Now, everybody, I've got to tell you this. Murphy here has decided to start racing, or probably have been for a couple of years, but he's only 15, and he's out there behind the wheel. Tell us a little bit about how you started and stuff. Well, Rod hurt his back uh -huh. in Mexico. And, Great know. place to hurt your back. Yes, <laughs> it is. So I had to show had to go on, so I just stepped up. That's how it happened. Yep. The show had to go on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So being here, this is amazing to me because I'm five foot two and these trucks are what, 12 feet tall? Yes, they're about 12 feet. And they sound like they're 100 feet tall. It's just been so overwhelming to me and so much fun. What is the difference between two, the different styles in trucks? I'm, I see a lot of them are better at like racing and some of them are better at freestyle. Can you explain the difference? Well, uh, some of the differences are um, the drivers, for instance. You know, uh, freestyle is a lot more timing, okay. and uh, the truck itself, um, you set up the shocks differently, more nitrogen, you lift them up a little bit more so you can get more air and it'll compress at a different rate. Okay. That's the main difference right there. Okay. And uh, uh, for, for racing, you don't want to leave it lower to the ground so you can turn the corners without a bicycle in or coming up on two wheels. Murphy, what's your favorite kind of driving? Do you like freestyle or racing? I prefer freestyle because it's more fun. It's uh -huh. fun for me. It's more fun for me to watch. Yeah. I like that. Do you do the spins and... Yeah, the donuts. Yeah, donuts. 
That's what they're called, donuts. Are you ever nervous to go over the big lumps of dirt? <laughs> well, for the first time when I do anything, I'm really nervous. Yeah. After I hit the first set of cards, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I was nervous just watching you, so I can't even imagine any of this. What I think is really cool about being here is that all the people, well, most of the teams that I've talked to have been a family. And I think that's really neat because coming into it not knowing anything, I would think everyone's macho men and, you know, but it's family. And you have your wife involved as well? Yes, actually my wife, my whole family. My wife, she's an artist and she does all the airbrushing and everything for us. Nice. Uh, we do the painting. Um, everybody in my family knows how to change a transmission. Uh, oh my gosh. So we're, you know, very family oriented. That's the only way we could accomplish this. And, uh, right because we really don't have any major sponsors and every every, every penny that uh, we make with this usually goes back into the truck. Oh, that's great. And um, we're you happy travel, doing it. travel around together to all the events? We used to travel uh, a lot and then uh, we kind of, you know, set some time uh, aside for the family and stuff. Right. So now we just maybe 20, 20 shows a year. Wow. So you plan on driving the truck for the rest of your life? I haven't figured it out yet. I've been doing, I don't even know what I want to be when I grow up. No? <laughs> He's too young. What am I talking about? I don't know what I want to be. <laughs> do you think you could teach me how to drive? Sure. Just need some time. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. I know you have a lot of shows. You have one coming up tonight. Yes. But I haven't seen this thing take a bite out of crime, but I have seen it take a bite out of a lot of cars. Hence the name. <laughs> I've helped you change a tire. I changed your transmission. That was help? <laughs> yes. I thought my son did all the work and you stood there looking. No, he was trying to make me look good. No, I was trying to make him look good. No, what am I, I talking I about? The first, the first way was better. <laughs> anyway, I've been under these things and now it's time for me to get inside before I leave. You haven't been under them. You're not dirty yet. I'm dirty. Now, how do I get in this thing? I showed you the other day. Don't you remember? <laughs> I forgot. That's the it. door, right? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> get me in this thing. Just climb up here? Climb on up. All right. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Okay, Rick, what's next? You drive. Safety first. Show me what I have to do. The better your driving abilities are, the safer you are. <laughs> no. I would not. No. You know it's not true. Oh man, I've been doing this the wrong way then. <laughs> Come on, if I'm driving this thing. I need Actually, to be safety. You got a five point harness. Okay. Straps you in. That holds your body to the seat. Okay. So you're not going to go anywhere. So. Okay. Steering wheel. That yeah. I got. <laughs> Steering wheel. You got your shifter right there. Okay. Then right behind your shifter, you'll see a little joystick sticking up. Yes. That's oh, that's the cutest steering. joystick I've ever seen. That's your rear steering. <laughs> Look at how cute it is. Yeah. On a big master truck, there's rear steering stick this big. That's yeah, so cute. <laughs> That's kind of funny, though, you got to admit. A monster truck with a gear shifter like this. This is a small, smaller steering wheel than you probably have on your car. That's true, too. See? So it's it's all not fun. so monstrous, is it? No, it's what <laughs> runs. It's what this operates is what's monstrous. I know. It's insane. OK, what's next? Helmet? You got your helmet, your neck roll. Gloves are always in the helmet. I could sleep in this too, okay? I could drive it and then sleep in it. Perfect. <laughs> then you've got your main power shut off right there. Okay. In case you're upside down. Yes. Something going wrong or you know something's wrong, that's your main power. It shuts everything off. The knob right next to it's your fuel. When okay. we hear us park, you hear the motors rev up before yes. they shut down. Yes. What that is is you push the fuel in and as you're leaning out the fuel, yeah. the motor revs up. Ah. Then you turn your mag off. And you have a fire extinguisher. You got your fire extinguisher down here. Up here where it says flame out. Yeah. That's a halon system. There's a right behind me, right next to you over there. Both centers oh, yeah. of the cab. And you got two facing the motor. So if I was to catch on fire, all I have to do is push that in and it'll squirt halon everywhere. Hell have, no. <laughs> you also have your fire suit. Mine's a three layered 
built by D Safety, and that'll give me a few minutes in the fire to get out too. Oh my gosh! I mean, I don't even have this on correctly, and I already feel overwhelmed. I can't imagine having a suit, a hat, get tightened in this thing. I wouldn't be able to move. Isn't it hard you don't to drive? Want to move. You don't. Yep, you want to be a sturdy. All you got your arms. Yeah. Okay. And when, when you're driving this thing, you actually drive by your hips, rather than what you're looking at. Yeah. You feel everything off your hips. How much of an angle the truck's at. Oh. Which way the truck's pointed. How vertical you are. How, in bad case, endo you are. Yeah. It's all by the seat because the seat will not move. Ah, I see. Okay. Your arms, your head, everything's bouncing around. So you learn to drive by the, your hips. Okay. Whichever position your hips are in, the truck is in. I think I'm ready. I'm going to oh take God, it for a spin. <laughs> I'm taking it for a spin. Well, well hang on. L let me turn on the remote ignition interrupter so at least when you start, <laughs> I can kill the truck right away. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that way we can control how far you get. <laughs> oh, I'm taking a spin around the block. Sure. <laughs> this thing gets about, oh, 75 feet a gallon. Are throttle. you serious? I don't think you're going to make it too far. I don't think I'll ever own a monster truck. But well, thanks, Rick. I'm starting to make, this. You make the big money with these things. That's, <laughs> that's what they keep telling me. All they want me to do is tear it up. Roll it. Do this. Do that. And what people don't understand, we're here to make a living, not yeah, to not equipment. Or to die. You're not. You're never going to die in one of these. You can cartwheel this thing. This thing's been over a couple times. Yeah. Do you feel any less safe? Yes. <laughs> Look at all the roll bar. Look at how many points are around you holding the cage up. Yeah, what if it broke? What's going to break? You can't break all of them at once. Your head hitting it. No, well, see, my head's up here on the pad behind you. Oh, my gosh. Am I short or what? <laughs> okay, I'm starting this up. Go ahead. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Out of the way. See you later. All right, guys, this is it. Adrian Heights for Extreme Series, Behind the Monsters. I will see you next time, starting this bad boy up. That didn't work very well. <laughs> Rick! <laughs> All right, the last thing for me to do here at the San Diego County Fair is to ride in a monster truck since are. I didn't get to drive one myself. So here we go. We're all in the Enforcer, the whole crew. It's going to be awesome. Definitely the most monstrous ride I've ever been on.